Hello, internet, YouTube, wonderful sketchy people. Um, we are live, and yeah, it's been a another summer day, but cold this week compared to last week. Out and about with the kids. Um, still haven't moved into our new place yet, but that's coming soon. So, who's here? Hello, internet, oh, YouTube. Oh, I'm here. Sketchy people. I'll get rid of that. Um, we are live. Now I can see how long the lag takes. Um, it's been a, another summer day, but I'm gone. So, who else is here? I had YouTube open as well. Hello, Anish. Hello, Ensim. Wonderful to have you here. Hi, Hilda. And Sketchy. Yeah, it's great. Great to be here again with you to draw together. So it's going to be um, cool or uh, an interesting challenge today. Um, so Anish is here from Calcutta. Karen from Los Angeles, wonderful to have you here. Annette from Denmark, hey. Uh, Beata's here, nice to have you here. Yeah, so for those of you who were here last week, uh, we we drew Spilly, and you may recall that I had um, arranged my um, reference together with the portrait of Jess. So Jess and Spilly uh, have been together for ten years, and I thought it would be really nice to to draw them together. So that's it's going to be really interesting because I, I really liked last week's drawing of Spilly. And now I have a bit of pressure on myself that I, I want to, to do a nice job of Jess so that they, they look really nice together on the page. Um, Brenda just jumped over from Mike's class, super cool. I didn't make it to Mike's class today. Um, it was like uh, um, just landed just in time to be ready for all of you. <clears throat> um, I call two dollars a better than one. <clears throat> It's, it's it's so interesting just uh, being here with this lag and wondering how, how long it takes before I say things and you hear it and and when you chat back to me. But it's it's cool, cool to be, um, even with this delay, it's just nice to be here connecting with all of you. But Art is also weirdly nervous about this portrait. And I think that's the, um, like if if you're also doing it on the same page and you've already got one drawing and Beata's was really lovely, um, it was su super nice what you did last week, and then to be happy with that and to be like, now I've got to add another face to it and I wonder how it's going to work out together. Um, so I think it's a super interesting challenge and I'm excited to be doing it with, with all of you. Anish, you asked where I'm from. I'm originally from Australia. But I now live in central Germany. I've been here for about 10 years. So it's, uh, yeah, I've been here for a while now. Um, Clover made it. Excellent. Ah, Anton, cool. Nice to have you here. And, uh, yeah, great. I'll um, bring up our, our wonderful muse for today. I don't know if Jess is here yet. She may be joining us later, but. Um, here she is, and there was a, yeah, so you may recall from last week, if you were here, um, this is a matching portrait, so both of these photos of Spilly and Jess were taken with the same lighting setup. I'll, um, I'll bring over my desktop, and um, try and switch that over. This is a weird thing in a way, I've got to do this with it. Um, for some reason, my desktop setup is a bit different today. So, yeah, here's my drawing from last week of Spilly. And I had this split pen, and after using it last week, when it dried, it split even more. So I've got this even broader split in the pen now. Um, but it was perfect for all of that wild hair. And here is in Procreate, I put the two photos together. So they're both identically lit on the same background. So lighting wise, they, they're going to work well together. And since they're such a wonderful couple, it's, it's just going to be nice to put them together on one page. So, um, hi Daisy. I, I hope 
that um, it's going to work out and that I'll be as happy with my drawing of Jess as I was of Spilly. And I think with the, the hair, um, Jess also has this awesome wild hair, and so maybe this split pen thing is going to do its same kind of magic uh, as it did last week. There's a little piece of wood wedged in here. Just uh, It's interesting. I've got a few tools over here, but I, I'll start off with this same pen that I used last week and see how it goes. So it'll be interesting because I've got these two faces next to each other and any kind of distortion that I drew into the portrait of a spilly. So I'm going to use this face and this is something I often do when I have multiple face composition uh, that I use this face as a reference for I'm going to start drawing stuff on the other face. So I'll use the glasses to line up the eyebrows and eye line and the hairline is a little bit lower over here. And so I'm I'm going to be measuring off of each other. So any kind of distortion I may have uh, drawn into this drawing is, um, is probably going to jump over across to Jess's face as well. So that would be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be using the same pen. This is made from Elder. And a special treat today, special for me, because Elder is my favorite plant is I have some elderberry ink, which I just freshly made just for today's drawing. And we were talking a bit about elder last week. Um, and this is just fresh elderberries pressed and I they were already starting to ferment because they were so ripe. So they had a really kind of heady aroma. And I, um, I brought it to a boil briefly just to sterilize it so they didn't keep fermenting and they didn't start getting moldy. So this is just pure elderberry juice, basically. And it's just been brought to the boil to keep it clean, sterilize it. It doesn't have any binder. I haven't added anything else to it at this stage. So this is like really pure, fresh berry juice. And it'll be interesting to see how similar it is to the blueberry juice that I used last week. So these are two super simple berry inks. Is anyone else? out there um, using natural ink today to draw with? If so, I'd love to hear what you're using. Um, so many cool inks and now it's a couple months on from the Ink Naturally class and there are so many different uh, plants out there now that were are just calling to be uh, turned into to ink. So this is, yeah, it's just great to go out into nature at the moment and see so many things that we can use to make ink from. Um, all right, so <clears throat> we're going to start drawing. Um, have a sip of water first. Is everybody ready? Any questions yet? I'll just start drawing along and as I hear your questions pop up, I'll try and address them or return to them at some point if I'm kind of in the flow or just talking a lot, then uh, at some point I'll make an effort to to address any questions. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, I was just kind of going to go, like, take Spilly's face as a reference for Jess's and also the negative space in between that I have here. And using all these things, just looking at shapes, how do we um, find the correct place to put things? And if you've got, if you've got a cool reference photo, then you can look at negative spaces and the way different things line up to, to figure out where you're going to start drawing. So that's what I'm going to do. And for those of you who aren't also drawing Spilly or had, didn't last week, you can just um, go for it. We have the wonderful photo up here and you can find the link to the photo um, below the live stream, below this video. And um, yeah, we can all draw just together. Um, where to start? This, there's this interesting intersection here where um, this kind of shoulder line coming down from Spilly, at least in my drawing, is intersecting with the hair. So I'm just going to take that and I'll use this negative space, this wedge in between um, Yeah, use that negative space, that wedge, to, to 
plan out the drawing. Just that end, end sim is taking out because um, she has massive internet problems. I hope it's just her. Is it everyone else? Is this running smoothly? Um, I hope so. See you later. It's a shame you have to go, but yeah, um, I look forward to seeing what you draw later. I hope everyone else is uh, not having internet problems. I hope I'm not having internet problems. That looks like my signal's strong. Um, just, just in case. Sketchy. Jordan is trying to write to me. I'll just um, switch my Wi-Fi back on on my iPad. Um, all right. Yeah, and there's just these wonderful curly, fun hair shapes here to to just start um, playing with. And yeah, this like there was so much fun last week with Spilly to have this split brush. I think it's a really wonderful. It's like a new discovery for me that this is a uh, a cool kind of hairbrush because um, you're like drawing these two parallel but lines which can have a really nice kind of hair effect and changing the angle of it will kind of uh, change the regularity of the lines that we create because we don't want every that constantly to be the same kind of split parallel line it's good to have some variation so I'm just kind of comparing. So I'm saying something now that you're not, where I'm looking at, okay, the Spilly's face in the way I set it up. Um, and I'm, I'm just looking, comparing spaces between, like the space between the head and the hair and, and how far it reaches over until Jess's face starts. Okay, no one has said whether they're still here. Are you still here? I hope you're still here. Um, and here I've got, um, what, yeah, work, working directly from this kind of setup. I'm, I'm. I've taken these two photos. I'm not sure if they are, if, um, like how well they're aligned with each other. Like maybe, like I see here that the size of Jess's head looks a bit smaller than Spilly's, but, um, and I'm not sure how that is in reality. I've yet to meet you in person. Um, so that's a, it's, whenever we're working from photos, we also have, you know, limitations and, uh, decisions which are made, which the photo kind of imposes upon any drawing that we do. Um, and then if you're planning reference and like copy pasting uh, photos together, then uh, Anne Desing is here. I I'm well, thank you. It's, it's great to have you here. Um, yeah, so I've taken these two different photos and I've I've like pasted them together, made this composition, and um, created some relationship between these faces, which uh, may you know may differ from reality. And so those kind of inbuilt imperfections of of the photos uh, or the way I've put them together, it's uh, kind of interesting to see how that's going to affect the final result. But they kind of look good together, even though Spilly's head looks a bit bigger. Um, I think there seems to be like a nice relationship between the heads. Um, okay, I just just restarted my internet connection. Um, 
And is it better now? I hope the connection is better. And there was a, um, um, Jason just asked, why did I start with the hair? The, the hair was a, it was just a, a good place between the two heads because I already had this other um, portrait that I started with and in my reference, um, it was the closest kind of intersecting thing. Um, error message from YouTube. Hmm. It seems better, Henry. <sighs> I hope it's better. Um, Jordan says there's an error message about a weak connection. Uh, Dawn says it's better. Brenda says it's better. Beata says it's better. Yay! Thank you for hanging in with me. There are more people watching now than when I restarted the internet. Um, so that's cool. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, you can hear me fine in Baltimore. Excellent. Uh, oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Internet. Let's um, let's keep going. And uh, I don't know what the issue was, but I just. Uh, turned off Wi-Fi, turned it back on, and now it seems to be better. So, thank you for staying with me. Thank you for your support. Let's keep drawing. So there was um, a question from Amdi Singh about why I started with the hair. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm, I, I'm a bit like, I hope, because of my, the drawing of Spilly last week, which is on the same page, is um, I was really happy with it. I hope it's going to work out. And setting up the shape of the head with the hair, like just creating this uh, negative space, the border kind of set up, looking at the shape of the head is just going to set up a space for me to draw into, which hopefully is going to work out pretty well. And last week with Spilly's glasses, which are totally awesome, like i um, not sure if you were tuned in last week, um, but um, the glasses were just a, I think that's such a, a great place to start from because they have a really clear shape that you can then orient your the rest of the drawing from as, as you progress. Um, and that's something that we don't have over here so much with, with Jess. Um, and yeah, starting with that, the hair shape to to reference off of that initial portrait and kind of draw into the rest here. That's why it started with the hair. Um, all right. So, um, drawing on, uh, yeah, this, so I've created this space now to draw the face into and I was kind of a bit distracted <laughs> with uh, technical issues and stuff. I hope this is, uh, I've kind of planned it out all, all right. And so using Spilly's face over here and then this space that I've drawn, I'm kind of kind of orient myself and draw into the space uh, using these points as a reference. So this is, I, I'm not sure what Mike covered today in his class, but totally a different approach. Um, kind of working from out to in and just comparing shapes to shapes and drawing and finding a way around, um, which is something I like to do and sometimes has really interesting results. And now looking at the eyebrow, I'm just kind of thinking where, um, where am I? like from this point of the ear, like how far up and how far across does the eyebrow start? What kind of angle do I have here? And and trying as faithfully as I can. And, and here I've got the reference right next to it. Sometimes you're in a different situation where you, you can't look straight across. But 
I'm able to look here and just kind of dance my eyes across to see what's happening on the paper and where I want to draw to and try and mimic these angles as well as I can and see how far into the shape of the head they're going and kind of with this arch of the hairline up here how do I how far do I want to take the eyebrow in and as yet there's not much to drawn to kind of take take reference from but the more we practice and the more we kind of look at these shapes the more you do it like this like in the beginning it can be pretty it was for me sometimes really disheartening to be like well this does this looks this doesn't look right but um sometimes it was real really fun results that i would have even though it's a bit off jordan just wrote to me and said i have excellent connection now oh, that's good um good to hear oh i think i was kind of I hope I'm not holding my hand in the way here. <clears throat> um, and I've I've found the more I keep practicing this approach of um, comparing, really training my eyes to see and recognize shapes and angles and bring all these abstract things together, the, the more I practice it, then the more, more often I'm happy with the result that I get. And, yeah... So that's something. Um, deep breath. So the paper is expensive, isn't it? I forgot to mention in the beginning, this paper, um, I'm not sh exactly sure where you are, but this is a, I'm in Germany and this is a German paper. This is actually, for the weight of this paper, this is quite a heavy stock paper. Um, and this was a block of 50 sheets. And I think it costs about 50 cents per piece of paper. Some, there are some watercolor papers that cost like four euros a sheet. Um, and there's some that are much cheaper. So there's really quite a broad range. And this, because sometimes I, my paper gets really wet and it starts to distort. Like if you use something like um, standard printer paper, it'd be, very dissatisfying experience drawing on such thin paper so if you can get some heavier paper it's really makes such a difference um, to draw into if you can't get heavier paper then you know you can use pencils and ballpoint pens and other dry media so it really helps to have watercolor paper that can really handle getting wet um, yeah, so I know what is it like fifty cents a sheet of paper for paper for me is uh, uh, in my experience um, is quite a good price, and depending where you are in the world, that may not sound so good, or depending on your circumstance. But whatever you can get, um, whatever materials you have, you always have the opportunity to draw and practice, and and you don't need. Um, you know, whatever you can use basically you could use cardboard from a packing box or um, food packaging and draw into that um, whatever you can get uh, just practice and keep drawing and, um, and maybe you'll end up with some really interesting results like maybe you'll make a pen from a stick and it'll draw some really cool interesting lines that you you, you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Or, yeah, just uh, try things out. Um, so as I've been talking, I've been kind of looking around and comparing this eye. I, I see I see differences. I see how it's a bit off to the original reference. Um, but I kind of keep taking stock of where I am, um, you know, how this there's this fold above the in the eyelid here and then there's the eyelashes and just where are they approximately in relationship to this eyebrow and the kind of steps in a bit from here I'm still up quite high from the top of the ear that I've drawn over here <clears throat> and so just constantly looking at all this stuff 
will um, help develop your um, sense of accuracy when, when you're putting down your lines and, and mark making with your drawing. <clears throat> yeah, the rock on the beach, that's it. So I don't know, it was about a month ago, um, Clover just mentioned uh, the rock on the beach. So I, I was somewhere at the beach and there were old bricks and coal left over from a fire and big flat rocks. And I, I drew a portrait of Stina on a rock at the beach. So you could also do something like that, you know, whatever's available. Um, you may want to not get in trouble. Um, just because there are a lot of wonderful big flat surfaces out there that some people don't want us drawing on. Um, but if you ask nicely, people might let you draw on walls um, with found objects. Who knows? Okay, here I've just dropped down to this nostril. It's kind of lined up with this inside kind of tear duct um, and just looked over to the ear that I drew here, which may be a bit off. You know, any, any things that are a bit off, these inbuilt distortions that keep exaggerating, if you use them as reference and things are a bit off, then it's gonna continue to um, there'll be some quirkiness maybe to the portrait, but if it all kind of fits within itself, then you may just end up creating a, a new person, which could be cool and fun. Ayesha is here from Pakistan, awesome. Nice to have you here. So for the, yeah, this is, this is interesting. Like this is blueberry from last week. It may have also changed color over the, the course of the week and this is elderberry and they're very similar colors um so this has a bit more kind of blue purplishness to to it this ink over here and this is has a warmer red color um, and in the world of natural inks and natural colors definitely where i live there are quite a lot of variations on the the purple red uh, theme it's a well-represented part of the color spectrum here and yellows. Um, and I find the, the limiting uh, colors that I have available um, using natural colors, it, it kind of, it, it determines my, my color palette for me. So here is just, it's using one or two different inks but it can be really interesting to collect different colors from your surroundings and to create a piece of art, a portrait or painting sketch of anything and to integrate different colors that come from that place. And I think it's really nice to let the place decide on the color palette. It's really cool. It's Anisha's first class with me. That's nice. I'm really glad to have you here. Um, that's awesome. I hope you're having fun. How many people are drawing along that are, are watching at home. And here I've just with the same process of like looking at the space of the nostrils and then and I've, sometimes I'll go straight over to the next eye but here for some reason I drop down to the nostril and kind of come across and back up. I have, I have a bit of a feeling that this is maybe, I don't know how much this is going to look like Jess, but we'll see. We shall see. I'm using the back edge of the, or the top, top side of the pen now. I've just rolled it over because I've got a cleaner, um, I think a cleaner edge to it like that. So here is, so I've got this really kind of thick, thick line and I can get more exact by turning it over. Uh, 
Um, something very cool that has uh, just been announced is you can get 30% off of two or any more classes with the discount code SAS30 in the Sketchy Art School. Um, and if that's off any classes, then maybe if Jordan is still tuned in, um, you could let me know. There's the Inktober Portrait Challenge, Inktober 2020 Portrait Challenge, which is coming up, which is going to be awesome in October. Um, and so maybe that could be one of them, the Ink Naturally class or something with Mike or Franz, or there are so many amazing classes. So if you're interested in, in getting some classes from the Sketchy Art School, you can use the discount code SAS30 at the moment. And there's just so many amazing, there's just so many classes available. It's, uh, it's great. So are there many people watching who did Ink Naturally or are perhaps still doing it? Uh, it's uh, a lot of fun. I just saw yesterday someone starting with lesson one from Ink Naturally, so cool. It's great to see people still studying and getting into it. Ah, oh, Jess says it looks like you. That's great. Here is um, I'm glad you think so. So Baltimore hoop love. In case you didn't catch the story last week, Spilly and Jess met like ten years ago, both selling hoops at farmers market in Baltimore, and and now they. They do a lot of cool hoopy permaculture things together, right? And last week you said you were working on the elderberry harvest. And so this week I'm drawing you with elderberry juice, elderberry ink. Which, although it is my favorite plant, I have not really used a lot. So it's really cool. I've, um, decided that the the hairline that I had was maybe a bit too high now that things are coming coming together and I've got these two eyes and nose and I've got a bit more stuff to take to that I can compare and see okay how close am I to what I to the, the reference and I notice oh it looks like the hairline is a bit high um, and since it's above you know it's it's nice when it's too high and you've got some dark hair because that can just be covered up pretty easy and then you can just kind of come down into here. And it was similar to what I did here as I was drawing this kind of hair space. I was like, oh, that, I think there's a, bit, there's a bit more width here. Um, so that will be, we can cover that up with ink later, um, which is nice. And, but even if you couldn't, you know, you just kind of, with ink, it'd be like, okay, the hairline's too high or it's too low, then okay, then you just, accept it and keep drawing with it. Oh, a few people have said things. Um, <clears throat> oh, cool. <laughs> Dawn K is trying to draw along, but has three pups demanding tubby rubs, tummy rubs, then um, I'm definitely going to take care of those pups. Yeah, so Clover and Brenda are going to be signing up for Inktober. It'll be cool. I'm I'm excited to. We're gonna move, um, and then I'll be able to start getting into. Uh, in September, getting into the Inktober mindset already, um, and it's always so amazing just to see. So so many people creating so much awesome, creative, fun stuff during Inktober. So that's going to be fun. It's like 30 faces, 30 days, except it's 31 days in October. And um, Vin and Arto are going to be teaching too. So it's really an honor to, to be teaching and sharing together with such cool artists and such a cool community of creative, wonderful people. That's all of you, and uh, so many, yeah, Sketchy's just so cool, right? That's great. Beata, so she's got the foundation down and happy 
So Beata was a bit nervous starting this as well, just like me, hoping that the the Jess portrait is gonna, you know, work nicely with Spilly over here. So I've just noticed I've got the I've kind of drawn these eyes. Well, I I haven't locked myself into the the bottom side of this eye yet, but there's actually more of a slant downwards than what I'm drawing here. So this is pretty um, pretty level. And sometimes we just kind of do this kind of stuff by default that we level things out with our mind and eyes when it's not actually like that. So this, this is um, super important to keep checking, looking, comparing things. Um, and I think, because I haven't put down the bottom edge of the eye yet, I can still save this. So it's, uh, or save it, what does that mean? But just get it more true to the original reference. Um, so if the corner of the eye is around here, over here, it should be, should be lower. Drop it down a little bit. Add some width to the top. Eyelashes there, which can often get away with. People have, um, the, the top edge of the eye and the eyelashes is often darker than below. And so this was, you can see this little speck here was going to be, like I thought, okay, that's going to be the bottom edge of the eye. It's way off. And I'm glad that I caught it. So I'm going to be able to bring this eye down much lower. And this is like this kind of observation and noticing, noticing errors as they're being drawn into existence. This is something that drawing with ink has really taught me a lot to observe and be aware of. Um, yeah, and because we're moving, I recently was looking back through the last 10 years worth of drawings that I did, sorting things out. And in back in the early days where I just almost exclusively drew with pencil. And though there, I, I didn't take much consideration to the, the kind of accuracy. I think I would just kind of draw, 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 and then try and erase things and correct things, which is fine. Um, and I, I think that's also, it's a fun way to draw. But then as I started really using ink and like working with a, a, a less forgiving medium, um, it's really helped me to look and take care of the, the marks that I make rather than just draw, 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 drawing and thinking I can fix it up later. I feel I'm, compared to the spilly drawing, like I'm a bit tighter than I was last week and maybe I have this kind of pressure on myself that I want it to look good and I want it to fit together and because um, I think it was really flowing and and now I'm taking a bit more care and working a bit slower, I think. Um, but maybe I can mix that up a bit. Let's you know, just add some more cool, fun double lines and stuff here. Maybe I'd like to just fill in the hair with a brush, this dark shape around here, but then I'm probably going to rest my hand down in here and... Or I could just do one side, just to do something different for a moment. Sometimes it's good to step away from one thing that we're doing and maybe do something else. Um, and if you have more time to work on something, really stepping away, going for a walk and then coming back, just splash some ink. Um, that's all right. Maybe it Um, yeah, taking some time off, stepping away, you come back refreshed and start to see things that you didn't notice before. Um, this brush is a watercolour brush. It's synthetic, flat, um, and good for laying down a bit more ink. 
really more generously. And I think like watercolor brushes in general are pretty good for inking with, uh, depending on the ink you use and how well you wash them. Um, it, yeah, it might be a bit tricky if you want to go back to watercolors with them. You just have to wash them really, really well, especially if you're working with black ink. You, you don't want to kind of be tainting all of your watercolors with, with that. I guess. Um, and this is called just putting down a big area of ink just to establish this kind of contrast. It's nice because I, I think it's often a, a wonderful moment in in a portrait when you put down um, big areas of contrast and it really makes you know, things start to look interesting and have some kind of sen sense of depth and it's a nice compositional element. And it's fun to play with the hair because hair is very forgiving. You don't uh, need to worry too much about the likeness of the hair. It's got a lot of fun kind of playful shapes and All right, I won't go too far down here because I'm going to rest my hand here. So I'll start to slow down there, but that was fun just to do something different for a moment. I can also and I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's relaxing. I feel like this kind of pressure I'm putting on myself to get the likeness right, to have it to be, you know, as cool as the other drawing. Um, that I just really felt a bit stiff with it and just to do something really playful and loose like this um, it's, I think it's going to help when I return to Jess's portrait um, that I'll have just feel a bit more relaxed going into it which I think is important if you feel yourself really tensing up um, while you're drawing and creating it's, um, it's good to somehow do something to uh, get flowing and if you if you can catch yourself or maybe you work well under that kind of pressure but I um I enjoy feeling relaxed <laughs> while I'm while I'm working it's not always the case but I appreciate it when it is the case yeah that's cool could be a side cut or all the hair on one side we'll see <laughs> Cool. That we relax, loose, silly lines, people, Spilly and me. This is a lot of fun to watch. Cool. Yay for elderberries. Yeah, elder, elder is my favorite plant, um, and it's it's so healthy. So it's a, a wonderful time of year now. You can make syrup. This this could be used as syrup. It's been boiled. Um, don't eat them raw. I've had bad experience with that. They can make you um, need to go to the toilet. Uh, but if you cook them, and often they're cooked with sugar, and you can make this nice syrup, or you can make, you know, different uh, jams, or put it in cake or something, and it's super healthy. Elderberries, yay for elderberries! Okay, this is, we've got like 12 minutes left. Maybe we'll go a bit longer because we had those technical difficulties. Um... Thank you all for, for hanging in with me. All right, so I, I found that the space between the nose and the mouth can be so decisive for getting a likeness right and just the, like a couple millimeters too low or too high, it can really make such a difference and make it look like a, a new person. Um, so it's an interesting moment here to just kind of take my, I've got the nostril and this kind of outside edge here. That's a bit much. Good to have some paper towel nearby. 
to lift a bit pink here. Ah, oh, that's nice, soft tone. This is doing some really cool stuff over here, the way the, the ink is drying and kind of separating, moving away from itself. Um, finding this angle and point like between the bottom lobe of the ear over here. I feel like I've made this, I've made the eyes look further off in this direction than they are in the photo. So I, I'm not going to use the pupil as like the my orientation like I often would, I think. Um, but maybe the top edge of the eye kind of, so I'm off a bit with the pupil. I can, but having noticed that, I can take that into account. And just putting this point down and then I can kind of look around from the nose. Is this, I feel like maybe it's a bit high, not sure. Um, maybe the other side, kind of inside edge of the iris, which it's maybe going to work over here too. Yeah, I think maybe this ear was looking more right than that one, and that's much lower. So, yeah, and this is just like I was saying, it can be a, a matter of millimeters. Um, so tiny little increments that can make such a difference. And this is maybe just like one or two millimeters higher than on this side, um, and then it's a fairly straight line between the lips. And this may even be a bit high, but I think this point is going to be more right than this one is. So it's it's good to take care in these moments. This was all loose and fun and flowy, splashy lines. But for this, like such a decisive thing, which is going to make such a difference with the likeness, it's good to um, focus and kind of line that up nicely. And so, yeah, I think it's good. And I'm just going to go with it. This line is maybe a bit, looks a bit intense at the moment, but it's all right. And just with a little um, some yeah, little mark here just kind of indicates that, you know, there's a bit of a smile to this uh, quite a, a neutral expression with the mouth, but just this little bit here turns it into like a, a subtle smile. Yeah, cool. What Henry said, <clears throat> and if you didn't already see, you should see Henry's drawing from last week of Spilly. Oh, it's just so good. Um, Yeah, and when you're sharing your work uh, on Instagram or wherever you'd like to share it, you can um, hashtag ink naturally, um, whether you're using natural inks or not. But that way, um, we're, we're going to see your work. So everyone who's uh, drawing along today or whenever you're, you're working from one of my sketchy lessons, when you share your work, tag ink naturally, tag me, because I'd just love to see it. It's always great seeing what people have done as we draw together. Even if you're not at the live stream, but you're watching at a later date, it's, it's always delightful, even months later, to be like, oh yeah, someone did that portrait, that's so cool. But yeah, I, I guess, Henry, that you've um, also learned a lot from ink, right? Henry's ink portrait of Spilly was just so good last week. All right, okay, now I think I've got to, I feel like I've got to loosen up for the rest of it. I've, I've taken care with some kind of important decisions along the way and now I'm just going to 
just get a bit of, get on with it. It was interesting changing the angle here of the jawline. Just notice it seemed a bit kind of sharp. Now, some people don't seem to like the sound of um, dry stick pens on paper. It's got a bit of a squeaky sound, but it's a bit like dry brushing now that I can put in some fainter lines with this dry pen. Um, and this, I think there's a lot of places in this, this dry state now of the, the pen or brush or drawing tool. It's kind of like a safe, safe time to to do some kind of shadow mapping and putting in different lines and without putting on a full on dark inky line, um, can still be you know quite subtle and careful in this way. I hope you don't mind the sound. I don't mind the sound. I think for some people it's a bit like fingernails on a chalkboard or something. How's everyone going with their drawings? Or just in general, if you're just watching um, giving tummy rubs to puppies, whatever you're doing, it's uh, it's lovely to have you here. And it's interesting, just kind of thinking of the <clears throat> the difference, the challenge of drawing Jess um, next to Spilly, is that with the the moustache, there's all this facial hair, there's the glasses, there was kind of a lot to to cling on to and a lot of places to find orientation drawing Spilly's face. Um, this is a, a lot of you know, clearness and openness and um, with Jess's face here. So it's uh, so it, it calls for a different approach. Well, I guess that's how I feel. Maybe if I had just loosened up and um, done it exactly the same way it would have <laughs> could have ended up all right but I felt like I had to be more careful <laughs> drawing today. But Art is really happy that's great. Wild manner. Love it. Love yours or you love mine? Love in general is just a it's a good good state to be in. Hope you're all Um, yeah, having fun with your drawings, having fun with this. Um, the, are the, the irises of the eyes, um, I've left them white, they're quite dark, because I wanted that initial load of ink to dry before I put in the darkness in the iris, because otherwise the pupil would be lost and just bleed out into the rest of the eye. Um, so I hope now I'm gonna, since I have a much, it's much drier now, I can fill in the iris without worrying about that pupil losing its um, clarity and bleeding out. And just that, creating that contrast in the eyes now, I think has instantly had an impact on the overall kind of feeling of the drawing. So when we've got a little time left to just return to some places that may, like the eyes, it's often the eyes that kind of call for some more, some more attention or where you can add some, add some life to a portrait. And just so there's a high con high contrast areas that um, draw our eyes to them 
So it's nice to have something to look at when your eyes are drawn. Oh, that's so cool, Jess. Just so so connected <laughs> that, yeah. So the I'm you know none of us are alone in our challenges. Um. So sketching couple stresses you out for all the same reasons. Yeah, it's um. It's nice to be here and kind of you know, get the get these. Get these things out there and to know that. I'm not alone in my stresses and challenges. None of us are. So this vertical hatching is just, for me, such a simplified way to, to just kind of fill in a mid-tone space. And it's so interesting to see that Mike's new class, which is starting next month after um, the Loomis method, is this contour hatching, which is like, you know, just a really different approach. and But related, like it's hatching, using line to define form. And this is a much more kind of reduced approach. Um, that contour hatching. Mike had a really cool lesson in um, April's 30 Faces 30 Days with contour hatching and I just loved it. But I also just love, enjoy the simplicity of just being like, okay, ch -ch -ch -ch, vertical lines. That's you know, serving, serving the purpose of just indicating that shadow shape. All right, and for now, I'm going to add some more hair shapes, but it's already um, already time. So I'm going to keep going a little bit due to the technical issues in the beginning. Uh, and just going to finish it up now with some more of that fun, loose, flowy, um, or even here, this is just such a full kind of shadow shape that you can just kind of put down some more. More contrast here, maybe some areas started to dry on the other side can intensify some kind of darker areas. But within the darkness, there's also this shift in value. And um, it's been a pleasure after that hiccup. Um, it's, it's just been nice here drawing with you, for you and with you. And thanks again so much to, to Jess and Spilly, our, our wonderful muses. It's really been so nice connecting with you this way. I feel like um, just on a, even though we've, you know, never met, just see each other on Sketchy and Instagram. Um, I feel like we share so much common ground so it's really, it's been, been nice to, to get to know you. I'm wondering, wondering here, I'll just move this across and start to see how they're looking together. Uh, 
Um, and in what ways now that I could continue to kind of <clears throat> unify this composition rather than it being like two separate things, I mean, like darkening the t-shirt so this kind of dark form flows down through here. I think that would be a nice way to tie it together. Um, and I can do that pretty easily with the brush now. So, um, oh, that's great. Yay, you love it. It's, uh, um, I love these scruffy lines of the beard over here, so I don't, don't want to lose them, but maybe this, yeah, here a bit of dry brush thing still kind of, I think this darker shape just kind of snaking around here um, kind of helps yeah, bring it together. All right. Um, Liz, I don't quite understand your question. Could I tell you the Instagram site to look for other drawings? <clears throat> um, if you're referring to mine, it's Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N, underscore Sarah, S-A-R-A. -A. And so any of you sharing your work, um, if you've been drawing along, you can um, tag me in there, at Dylan underscore Sarah. Use the hashtag Ink Naturally. Sign up for sketchy art school classes, Ink Naturally, Mike's awesome classes, Francis classes, Lisa's classes. There are so many. The 30 Faces, 30 Days classes. Inktober, there's just all these amazing classes out there, and if you if you um, purchase two or more, you get thirty percent off. So SAS thirty is the code for that. I'm sure it's down below uh, the live stream. Um, thank you, Sketchy, for putting up my my Instagram there. Uh, so there's that, and yeah, have a look below for that code to sign up. Um, Awesome promotion, so much fun drawing together, knowledge shared, so many amazing classes and courses. Um, thank you so much, Sketchy, for having me, and thank you to all of you for being here. Um, so, <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, Daisy, uh, it's great to have you here. Um, and it's great that you came to the drawing session on Tuesday. And for those of you who would like to come draw with us on Tuesday, check that out on Instagram. Um, a similar time to now, uh, we get together on Zoom and draw each other, and it's a lot of fun. And we get to chat and um, draw, and it's just super cool. And it's super interesting that for you, um, you felt like it was better than last week because you could do the thinner lines. So... Um, I, I felt with this, um, I ah, it just flowed, and I I guess I f maybe because I'm like a, a scruffy bearded guy with glasses, um, maybe I felt more comfortable just kind of you know drawing this expression of myself, and then I really had to approach it differently drawing Jess. So it was really interesting and totally interesting to hear that you had kind of the reverse experience during that. Clover, you're welcome. Thank you for being here again. It's awesome. Um, here's uh, Daisy's recommendation for Tuesday. Wonderful. I love it too. So come draw with us. Um, and thank you all for being here. I look forward to seeing your work on Sketchy and Instagram. Um, thank you, Jess and Spilly. It, it's been so much fun. Uh, yeah, so see you here next week, hopefully, or see you Tuesday, come and draw together live, and uh, hope you all have a, a wonderful week, evening, afternoon, morning, um, take care of each other, be kind, and have fun drawing. Bye-bye.